next is Lynn Lederborn. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Before there was photography, there was hair. People throughout the centuries have used human hair as a way to remember and cherish loved ones. Hair has been used in portraits, wreaths, and even jewelry. Hair. Some of us have a lot of it, like the unidentified woman in this photo from the museum's collection. And some of us don't have a lot of hair. However, hair was here long before the invention of photography, so one simple way people remembered their loved ones was by saving a lock of hair. Just like this person, this person did. This small braided lock of hair belonged to Clifford Cleo Kennedy, who was 15 months old, when his hair was cut. It was saved along with tracings of his hands and a few pressed flowers. Someone who loved him, was it Clifford's mother? wanted something to remember Clifford by when he was 15 months old. And somehow, in the act of saving all that hair, a new art form was born. Hair art can be found as early as the 12th century, but it really took off uh, in the Victorian period. Here you see a braiding table, mostly used for making hair jewelry. Small weights were attached to hair strands that allowed them to be twisted and braided into various intricate patterns. Hair wreaths are amazingly plentiful, plentiful for throughout the United States. We have three in the museum's collection. This example of hair artwork dates to about the 1870s. It was made by a member of the Buckley family who came to the Partridge area from Indiana. It's not in the typical shape of a wreath, more of a tree shape. As you can see by the varying colors of this hair, hair for many different people was often used in one wreath. But some hair art consisted entirely of one person's hair. Beads, bows, and other forms of ornamentation could be attached to the piece as well. And in a close-up of this blonde flower, tiny white and pink seed beads embellished the center of the flower. Black beads were also used as decoration, but they almost always signified that the person whose hair was being used in the artwork was deceased. Some of the even more unusual hair artworks include upright hair sculptures protected by glass domes. These flowers have several varieties of the black glass beads intertwined in the flower petals and in the center of the coiled loop are some black seed beads. Hair was boiled several times before being worked. Also, hair's natural tendency to be shaped or curled easily makes it ideal for this intricate art form. The use of a lighter hair color is added for effect to the tip of this wheat-like stalk, embellished with wire coils. It's rare to see red hair in a wreath, mostly due to the fact that red hair is much rarer than other colors. So many hair wreaths have survived over time in, in such good shape is due to the fact that hair is very slow to decompose. This is our largest hair wreath. It is 26 inches wide by 27 and a half inches tall by about four inches deep. It represents a more traditional looking hair art form done in the shape of a wreath. The many colors of hair used signifies that this wreath was made from hair of many different individuals, probably all family members. The wreath was made by one of Wilma Helm's great-grandmothers, either Mary Joanna Jones Raymer or Ida Jones in 1875. The family lived in the North Hayes Township of Reno County. While the flower buds are made entirely from hair and wire, embroidery floss was sometimes used to wrap around the stems and to add color. The variety and intricacy of the wreaths is just amazing. Wire was used to support and retain the structure of the various floral shapes and braids. Sometimes horsehair was added to the artwork for color or texture. Because of the coarseness of horsehair, it is more difficult to bend, loop, and braid than human hair. Although wreaths were the most common form of hair art, jewelry items of all manner were made. Necklaces, bracelets, charms, pins, lockets, earrings, watch fobs, all were made with human hair. There were patterns for making hair jewelry and hair art, and some pieces could be purchased through catalogs. Another art, another art form uh, using hair was hair painting. It was created by pulverizing the hair into a powder, mixing it with paint or an adhesive, then used to paint scenes. It created a sepia-toned piece of art that could be used alone or in jewelry pieces. Intricate shapes in the artwork were made in a couple of ways. One was braiding, using that table, and used mostly for jewelry. But another way was used uh, in making the hair wreaths 
was to tediously wrap the hair around the wires and then mold the hair wrapped wires into the desired shapes. The last wreath that we have, it dates, it dates to about 1870. The wreath belonged to Alva and Ethel Harden of Nickerson. The hair is from various individuals from the Bradford family lineage. There are a total of 46 tags attached to the wreath with names of the owners of the hair. All of the tags' names are handwritten in a beautiful calligraphy. This tag indicates this hair belongs to Anthony Bradford. Uh, one of the main purposes for creating the hair wreaths was as mourning art and a way of tracing genealogy, a sort of family tree. As family members passed away, strands of their hair were kept as remembrances of those individuals. This tag says Minna Bishop, and a small heart shape is visible to the left. Most open wreaths were oriented in a typical horseshoe shape, with the open part facing up. There are many reasons symbolically why the open part was placed on the top. The opening was at the top of the wreath, so good fortune or good luck could be caught inside and wouldn't spill out. Here is the central flower of the wreath, which often was made of the hair from the most recently deceased of family members. The central flower, or central artwork, was reserved as a place of honor in the artwork. The Bradford family wreath is unusual in that the opening is apparently meant to face downward. It's unknown why the artist created it that way. Note the lovely, a whimsical double heart. Hearts are a recurring design element in this particular wreath. Other shapes common to wreaths are butterflies and stars. In the final photo, it shows three tags, some beadwork, work, some beadwork and some more hearts. Family names included in this wreath are Bishop, Bradford, Phillips, Harden, Orrin, Lina Weaver, McElroy, Lapham, and Heminger. Could you be, late, be related to them? So remember, save some hair today because we are all just hair today and gone tomorrow. <laughs>